Hello Physics Ninjas and welcome to this next module which is all about what holds the atomic nucleus together. What stops it from flying apart? In other words, nuclear stability. Nuclear stability. Okay, in the 1930s it was known that the nucleus contained positive particles which were called protons. And you and I know that positive charges, when you bring them together, will want to repel due to a force called the electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force. So the question is, what keeps a nucleus together? If it's full of protons, why don't the protons just fly apart because of the electromagnetic force? Well, a new force was needed to be uh, to be postulated, to be uh, theorized, and this new force was called the strong force, which only acts at very short range. The strong force. It, it's what keeps a nucleus together. It's sometimes called the strong interaction. Strong interaction. Now, I mentioned it was very short range. Um, if you go above five femtometers, now a femtometer is so that's 5 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. A femtometer is, time, is times 10 to the minus 15 meters. Pretty small. If your two protons are uh, above that distance from each other, so if we're like this, then the strong force is, has no effect. So there's no effect here. In fact, the strong force is effective only lower than five femtometers, maybe about between three and and one femtometer. So, if you go less than one femtometer, then it becomes repulsive. So, let's do that. So, less than one femtometer, it's repulsive. Because that means it stops, if you bring them too close together, it stops them from collapsing together. Um, and between, let's say, 1 and 3 or 4 femtometers, it's very attractive. Okay, so let's take a look at the strong force between two protons. Okay, now you're just uh, seeing a little chap here uh, who's going to be important in a moment. This guy is called James Chadwick, and uh, just going to explain how uh, he found the, the next particle in the nucleus called the neutron. But we'll just come to that in a moment. Let's first of all take a quick look at the, uh, the strong force in terms of what it looks like on a graph. Okay, so let's just do a, a little graph here. This is going to be force and... This is going to be our, our separation of the protons. Okay, so we're going to be considering two protons. Dun, 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 plus one charge each, and they are separation. And we might want to call that R. There we are, funny R. And we're going to measure this in femtometers. Now, a femtometer is times 10. It's 1 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. That's pretty small, eh? Pretty small. So, remember, less than 1 femtometer, the strong force is repulsive. Between 1 and 3 femtometers, it's highly attractive. And after 5 or 4 or 5 femtometers, it's no, it doesn't have a, an effect. Now, of course, we've got, we've got two forces going on here. We've, we've got the strong force, which is trying to pull them together if they're within range. And we've also got the electromagnetic force, 
which is trying to repel the two protons apart. And the electromagnetic force is an inverse square relationship. And many of you, I'm just going to sketch that inverse square kind of relationship for the electromagnetic force, which would be doing something like this, just to give us a guide. Now the strong force is highly attractive between 1, 2, 3 femtometers. So here we go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 femtometers and then it goes to zero. So what actually happens here is when we add up both of the electromagnetic force and the strong force we get a curve which is looking a bit like this. So it comes down and then reverses and then oh, I've done that wrong. Kind of goes through about two femtometers. There's a little bump between two and three, and then it tails off like that. Okay, so a bit of a, a slightly sketchy drawing here, but um, this is 10 kilonewtons, 20 kilonewtons, so force is measured in kilonewtons. You might think, wow, that's quite a, a big force, but of course these are big forces acting on, on uh, very tiny particles, and the, uh, the forces are very strong at this distance. Um, we've got a little peak here at 500 newtons and this point here just underneath one is a zero point on the force so it's neither attractive nor repulsive and I, what I should do down here is, is actually put a, a negative axis in here because that's uh, this side is attractive. This side is repulsive. Okay, so that would be minus 10 there, minus 20. And so there's a, 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 a zero point there, and this is the equilibrium point. Equilibrium point. So if you push the two protons together a bit more and it goes up the curve, then it becomes repulsive and they're pushed back down again. If the two protons are pulled apart a bit and then they go a bit further away, then the strong force takes over and pushes and re attracts them back again. So we always go back to this equilibrium position here. Now one of my students asked the other day about a, uh, well what about this point here, isn't that an equilibrium position? Well, it sort of is. But let's just think about it here. If you were to pull the protons apart ever so slightly, and let's say that they, they move a little bit up, then suddenly we've got a repulsive situation. The electromagnetic force takes over, and the two protons will whiz apart. So that's unstable. If, for example, you push them slightly together, then what happens here is that the, the uh, strong force will take over, and um, and actually pull them further in until we get back to the equilibrium position. So this is an unstable point. Unstable point of equilibrium. It, it's, it's not really a point of equilibrium. You'll go one way or the other if you, if you disturb the distance ever so slightly. So this is where we're at. That's the equilibrium point that we, the two protons will get to. So this is why you can have a, an, an, a nucleus of, of um, let's say, um, two protons together because the, the strong force can actually keep the two protons together. Okay, now uh, let's just take a look at the graph without the electromagnetic force so you can see what's going on without the distraction of the electromagnetic force. So let's do the same kind of thing. And what you'll see is we'll go down like this, and then the strong force will tail off like that. So let's see, this is about uh, three femtometers, it's about two 
1, got the general idea. So the peak is just between 1 and 2 femtometers on the scale. And this is the force again. So this is just the strong force as if it were between, let's say, a, a neutrally charged particle, and we'll see what's going on in that in a moment, and another neutrally charged neutral particle. And in fact, uh, we're now going to look into the neutron, and the strong force acts between two neutrons as well. Okay, so there is a problem. Ignoring these just for a moment, we'll come back to these. The problem is that, let's say you, you build up your nucleus, and you start putting lots and lots of protons together. Okay, so let's do that. Let's, let's build up a nucleus. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, lots of protons together, strong force acting between protons, but only those that are in range. Okay. Now, hold on a moment. Looks like a bunch of grapes. Okay, hold on a moment. What about this chap and this chap here? They're a long way away, so the strong force won't be able to act. But the electromagnetic force will be acting between them, and that will make them repel. And in fact, what happens is, as you grow a nucleus with protons, you, you're unable to have enough strong force to bind the nucleus together, and it should actually just explode. So why do nuclei stay together? Well, we need another particle, and that particle is called the neutron. The neutron. Neutron was discovered in the 1930s by a chap called Chadwick. Here he is. He worked alongside several other scientists um, who were investigating uh, bombarding materials with alpha particles, and they found that um, a neutral, neutrally charged particle was emitted and uh, further experiments led to the identification of the neutron. It has approximately the same mass, same mass as a proton and it has zero charge so it's therefore not, it's therefore uh, the electromagnetic force is so it's not subjected to the electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force, no. It doesn't have any of that. The strong force acts between protons, it also acts between neutrons, and it also acts between protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are called nucleons, and so the strong force acts between any pair of nucleons. So any pair of nucleons, you're going to get the strong force acting. And that means you can build up a nucleus now. And you can put in neutrons, which will help to bind the nucleus together. The neutrons are neutral, they don't have the electromagnetic force acting on them, and therefore they're able to, to add more strong force, basically, to the, uh, the proceedings. I hope that makes sense. So we've got strong forces acting between neutrons and protons, neutrons and neutrons, and also protons and protons. And so we can keep the nucleus stable.